What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and today I've got a short video for you talking about Banished by Shining Rock Software. This game was released earlier on this week and I've played it quite a lot over the last three or four days, quite enjoying it, and in that time I kind of came to the conclusion the best way to approach any sort of video about this would be in a kind of tutorial fashion rather than giving you a straight up this is what I think about the game. So diving straight in with that, uh, one thing I'll mention while I do the settings here is that Obviously I'm playing on a relatively easy setup at the moment, but anything I say during this will be completely applicable to any of the difficulties, and I normally play on a much harder one. This is simply to make things a little less stressful trying to manage everything while also talking about it. And while this is loading, I'll just mention I did actually have a bit of trouble running the game. Uh, when I first launched it up, I was greeted with a black screen, although for anyone else that has that problem, all it took was a quick visit to Shining Rock's website, and there is a bunch of workarounds on their front page. They're aware of the issue and are working on a fix. So you can get the game up and running, and aside from that, I've had no problems. So here we are with our first settlement, and in this difficulty, we actually start off with a storage barn and a stockpile already built. You don't in the hard one. And we've got our settle settlement... Uh, settlements, our citizens here, ready to go about their business. But the first thing they're going to complain about is the fact they don't have anywhere to live, and then, of course, you're going to need to worry about how to heat and feed them once they are in there. So, first thing I would recommend anyone does is open up these four windows here. Now, the menu system you'll get used to quite quickly. It, it's much more uh, intuitive than it appears at first glance. But yeah, open up these four and arrange them as you see fit. But basically what this gives you is a town overview, this one an event log where you can see all the things that happen in your town and the professions window which I'll come back to in a bit. So I'm pausing the game again. So the first thing we need to be concerned about for our newly fledged little town is giving them somewhere to live, some shelter. I'm just gonna sort of slightly randomly stick some houses about this area and there is a sense behind the random placement uh, I've built a whole number of towns that are right next to each other and they have had a burning down so spreading things out is always a reasonably sensible option so that you can now see that they are going about moving resources from my stockpile over to the housing areas however let's just speed this up so we don't wait for ages for them to do so however what we don't have anyone uh, currently is anyone to build these so up in this profession window you can see we've got not builders out of 10 and we can just click this up arrow to assign a few people to go and be builders instead. And they will now take about the tasks of actually putting up these structures that have all been prepared. So while they're doing that we next need to worry about where to get our food from and how on earth do we heat these things. So first up, and heating tends to be the first concern before food because as you see we've got a reasonable amount of food, we're going to need a woodcutter and all he is going to do is chop any wood we collect into firewood to keep the houses warm. As you see, as the houses finish, they get occupied by the various families that started our settlement. We've got the woodcutter there, and once they've finished building up the houses, they're going to move on and start building this, and our dudes will automatically clear anything underneath where you've placed your buildings. So you don't need to worry about doing that first, but we will actually go and clear some stuff now. In the uh, removal and destruction tools, you can manually say to go and harvest some resources from an area. So in this case, we're just going to clear up a big area kind of around the side of our settlement so we get plenty of wood and plenty of stone because those are the things we'll be building with to begin with. And as you can see, we've already got some people that are complaining about being cold. So this is why we went straight onto the firewood before we did anything else. That is the one that they will complain about first. But very soon they're going to start complaining about food as well. And the easiest way to sort the food problem is with the gatherer's hut. And I would advise you want to put it somewhere that's not right next to your settlement. Just a little way away where you've got some woodland so that they've actually got somewhere to gather from. Now you see here we've got a question mark. And this tells me there's no citizens working here. And again, you can use the professions window or you can just click on a building. And their same sort of repeat of that icon is just there and will allow you to assign someone directly to that task. And they're now going to go over there, stop chopping up the wood and hopefully stop these people from complaining. And at the same time, the gatherer's hut is being built. So we've got a potential source of food up here. We have a potential source of heat, firewood from there. So, and we've got our potential source of shelter. So essentially the, the absolute basics are now set for our settlement, which means it's time to be thinking about expanding. And expanding is something you're constantly going to be worrying about in uh, Banished because of how you populate your city. So if I send another couple of houses up over here, 
pressing R and T keys to uh, rotate buildings around, just if anyone's interested. When these are built, you can see in each of these houses we have a family, essentially. So here we have quite a young family, but a family, parents, children. When those children get old enough, so about 10 years old, that they become adults and want to move out, they will look around for an empty property, e.g. this one. These people have clearly sort of recently moved in. And what they will do when they get there is create more children. And this is how your population will grow. However, if you do not have an empty house for them to move out into, they will remain in the original house like this and they will live with their parents and they will not have kids. So it's important that you continually manage the amount of space you have available in your settlement. Because if you don't, you will end up in periods where everyone is old because there hasn't been very many children coming through because you weren't expanding the settlement, you weren't providing space for them. And yeah, that can go wrong quite quickly. My very first game went down the lines of about 10 years in, everybody was dying of old age, the only other people in the town were children, and by the time all the old people are dead, the children obviously had no one to look after them. So it's a pretty brutal way to go. They're taking their merry time finishing off this gatherer's hut. And it's important that these sort of these first few structures are up quite quickly because otherwise you're going to immediately run into problems with your resources and you know, it's your firewood and your food are the absolute most important basic ones and of course firewood comes from logs so that's pretty important as well. In fact you can see as soon as I built this house they loaded it up with stuff and I'm now out. But it's alright, the gatherer's hut is almost finished so as soon as this is done we can assign some people to it. We have a large number of labourers so we can stick people straight in there. Anyone you assign to a property or assign to any sort of job will come from your labourer task force. And it's important to have a decent number of labourers available, not just because they'll replace people that die, for example, but also because your labourers are what makes everything else efficient. So you can see down here, you've got this, this person here is dropping wood and then he's going to collect the wood and he's going to take it over to the stockpile. However, a labourer could also do that for him, and all the while the labourer is doing it, he will continue to chop wood. So the more labourers you have, the more efficiently every individual building in your settlement is going to work. We see now the gatherer's hut is up, and by clicking there you can start to see every building has one of these production statistics, and you can see what they've gathered this season and last season, and they're starting to work away. But that on its own is not going to provide quite enough food. So the other thing I'm going to build over here in this wooded area again is a hunter's cabin. Back to back, why not? And this will fulfil a similar task. It hunts in the area that's highlighted and will bring back food but also leather. And leather can be used to be made into clothes. And the other thing we need to worry about of similar lines is tools. So you can see here people are starting to get hungry because I've only just about got my food production up in time that people aren't going to get really, really angry with me. And again, there's a Every time someone moves into a new home, they take a bunch of resources with them into that home. So we're starting to uh, really push out the maximum we can draw out before that food started coming in. So that's good to get it up when we did. And I'm going to build another stockpile over here just because we are filling up this one pretty brisk. So yes, as I was saying, next thing on the list or the next thing on the menu under resource production, you're going to want a blacksmith. Uh, we can put the blacksmith. And you're going to want a tailor. And what these will do between them is replenish your clothes, which keep your people warm, enable them to work for longer, especially in the winter months, and it will replenish your tools. And without tools, people would simply work slower, and they do wear out, so you're going to constantly need to be replenishing those, just like you're going to constantly need to be replenishing everything else. And what I'm slowly heading towards over here is something that will enable this to be quite sustainable. So once these two are done, and I've started getting those in, the next thing I'm going to want to build, and you can quite happily queue things up in the list, is a forest lodge. And what this forester lodge will do is manage the trees in this area. So inside that green circle, everything in there, it will cut down and replant trees. And at the same time, it will also clear out anything that's not a tree. So you can end up with a very lush forest in which your hunter and your gatherer can be plying their trade. And as that gets better and better, they become more and more efficient. 
Yep, there's the hunting cabin finished, and as I've got some spare labourers, let's just have one in there. As I mentioned earlier, you always want to have the labourers available, otherwise you end up with uh, stuff. Stuff gets very hunky, clunky, starts taking a long, long time to be done because all the builders are having to fetch their own stuff for themselves, all the woodcutters are having to fetch their own wood, everyone's having to fetch their own stuff, and it becomes very slow. It's much more efficient when the labourers are doing things for... So as we're full on buildings, I'm actually going to build another property just to encourage my population to grow relatively quickly because I believe I've got a decent handle on the, the food situation with these two running and I wouldn't mind being able to put a few more people working in the hunting cabin and then eventually in the forester lodge. So as is soon going to become a problem, we've got lots of people becoming adults and eventually we're going to get someone that's getting a bit old. Although not anyone at the moment. But yeah, in here you have your town services. And these are everything that's going to go about making life better for your settlement. And this is kind of your, your progression route. Everything else obviously is just more and more and more. This is where things will start to change. Now the first thing I'm actually going to build is a well. This is going to hopefully help them put out a fire should there be one. Let's hope there's not a fire because they are very, very difficult to deal with. But yeah, well is important. But the other thing from this list that's important to begin with, uh, you know, there's plenty in there, is a cemetery. Because once people start dying, people start getting very, very angry about the fact that people are dying unless there is a cemetery around. As you see, prevent citizens becoming sad when their elders die. And our blacksmith is done, so I can assign another person to work in there, start producing us some tools. Let's notch the speed up one more again. So we're looking alright, we've got our sort of sustainable food setup being built over here. That's looking good. Firewood, as you can see, that icon that was up there briefly just tells you that you're limited as to how much fuel you can build. You've, you set that limit so you don't have too much in your storage. And what's generally a good idea with fuel at least is actually to raise this limit to 300 or maybe even 400. Um, as you'll see now the winter has arrived the amount of firewood and the stocks of firewood I have is going to plummet quickly. They use a lot more in the winter than they do in the summer as you'd expect. And what I like to do is to have this up quite high so that you kind of you build yourself a buffer of firewood that will last you through the winter. You notice I've just knocked a good hundred off that, and I don't even have that many people at the moment. A lot of these houses are kind of empty. So as this settlement expands and as we end up with more people, notice someone immediately moved into there, so they're, they're looking for it. He needs a partner now. But yeah, as the settlement expands, you're going to need that buffer zone, and the same is true with food, except the... Uh, amount you can store with food and you can always adjust these by clicking on the various buildings so you can see here I've got my food limit 5,000 that that's plenty but the one for firewood and also potentially the one for logs is a little bit limited and if you want to look at all of your food caps there is a button that brings up another window I don't tend to have this open all the time but you can if you want that will allow you to change all of these various limits Okay, so our settlement's expanding quite nicely. We could potentially think about improving, let's uh, put someone in there to go and make us some clothes. We could potentially think about improving the, the food situation. And there's a number of different food types you can build. One thing I will say is these fishing docks, they're not very efficient. Um, you, you can use them in a push, but they'll take four people to operate properly. And four people from one of those will produce 600 to 800 fish. Uh, as you can see, if I look at this gathering hut, they're producing, I mean that wasn't a full season, it was only up for half the year. In a year a gathering hut with a proper wood built around it will probably bring back something like 2,000, so they're far more efficient. So yeah, one thing I've just realised I've forgotten because I've noticed that my citizen's health is going down is I do not yet have a herbalist. Now these again, you want to, you're kind of building a little woodman base with uh, these four buildings. You'll only ever want one herbalist for your entire settlement, no matter how big it, it gets. But what they do is basically supplement the poor food choices that you're going to be providing your people with medicine so that they stay happy and healthy. So once that herbalist is up and running, I should see the average health of my citizens go back up. Now, 
think it's time to collect some more resources. Let's strip back around and get us some space again. The other thing you can do in here, so I can specifically say collect stone and iron, and I'm actually going to do this just here over this stuff, which is in range of my hunting cabin and my forester lodge and so on, because obviously anywhere there's stone and iron, there can't be a tree. So by cutting all that back and helping move it straight away, that will actually speed up how well my forestry lodge works. And this whole setup is designed to become more efficient the longer it's been around and the... the I don't know, just by putting them together they become more efficient, but the longer it's been there, the better the wood around it gets, the more self-sufficient that setup will become. And I've certainly had it where with sort of two or three of these little bases set up, I can keep a very large sort of 150-man uh, settlement going with just those. Okay, so we're all set for resource production, so I think the next thing I'll talk about and the next thing I'll introduce is... Firstly, a trading post, and you're going to want to get one of these quite quickly because this, and they can only be placed on the water's edge like this. That's there looks good. They are obviously what enables you to trade with other um, other settlements, and you'll have merchants that come by and stop at the trading post down the river. And through these, obviously, you can trade for resources that you can get yourself from around the area, but you can also trade more importantly for livestock and seeds and this opens up the ability to use the crop fields and the pastures and the orchards. Now on this difficulty I will actually start off with some seeds in order to put in one of these and on the hard difficulty you don't, you have to buy them. But let me get one of those built up and I will explain how the farming system works and once you get up to a larger settlement the farming is definitely one of the best ways of raising food. This produces, for the number of people you have on it, a very, very large amount of food, so... Alright, well this is good enough for my time to mention. If you go into your tools and reports again, you actually have the ability to increase the priority of something by just dragging over the area, so I can tell them to go and clear that now, essentially. Do that first. Finish off my crop field, please. Thank you. Right. So basically the way these fields work is you can select a seed and as you can see I can only actually make crop, uh, squash at the moment and I can assign some farmers to it. Let's reduce the number of builders briefly. Always a good idea to have a full number of farmers on a field and what they will do is sow this in the spring and harvest it in the autumn and in between obviously they have to look after it and increase the yield. Uh, but the reason you want those three farmers on it is in fact that when you get to the autumn and it's harvest time as soon as you get snow, it will kill off any remaining crop, and occasionally you'll in, be in the scenario where your farmers can't clear it in time. So that's why it's a good idea to make sure you've always got a decent number of farmers available on the task, unlike some of these other ones where I'm quite happy to have undermanned uh, buildings. You never really want to be doing that with your fields. Now, the orchard works in a very similar way to this except it takes three years to grow instead of one. So they are very much your sort of high quality, top end goods. And it's something that to begin with, there's no real point investing in unless you're really keen on getting some variety. Pasture, and I will build one, but I won't be able to demonstrate it because they require livestock and livestock can only come from the trading post. In fact, the easiest way to demonstrate some of these, let me load up a, another game I have running. Let's have a look. So this is a game that's much, much further on in progression, uh, although on very similar difficulty levels. And here you can see we've got a whole bunch of these fields that are... I think we're at the end of the year, yes, yeah, so they're all being harvested now, and I doubt, looking at this now, whether or not they'll get harvested in time before the first snow comes and wipes out the remains of those crops, even though they've got a storage bun barn right next door. You will have a quarry and a mine, Now these enable you essentially to get stone and iron and coal without having to go and collect the raw resources off the ground, because as you can probably see, I've stripped this place pretty bare anywhere around nearby me so those are something you'll get on further down the line the other things you will eventually come on to is a town hall and town halls are very useful because they enable you to see sort of just a general 
overview of what's going on in your settlement and you can see here how many homes you've got and how many families for those homes how clothed and educated they are the health and happiness but you can also then go and have a look at some graphs for how over the length of time you wish for say food so you can see how reliable your food source is and it looks to me from this graph like I'm not doing too badly this is creeping up if anything you also have the nomad window and the nomad window is occasionally you will have nomads approach to join your settlement and they will come in a large group with various numbers at a time and you can allow or deny them and the only thing to consider when doing so is firstly can do you have enough room for them but also they will bring a disease they can bring diseases with them uh, and if they do you will end up with an outbreak in your town and you need to deal with it with a hospital and all of these of course are available through the town services and as I've just noticed a trader is here just show you briefly the trade window so you, here you can see I've got a bunch of stuff stored in here that I can use as trade items and then there's various bits and bobs that I can buy from him in more important most importantly there are seeds so I can say I want to buy some seeds from him and I will trade 2,000 potatoes and 500 fish for those seeds once the value is equal trade and now I am able to grow those seeds on my farm so once to go over here I can now select Hmm. Oh, I'm an idiot. I can now select pecans in the orchard. Final bit I will talk about is the market, and I find these very useful. Basically, they act like a, a granary and a stockpile combined. And you'll notice that in this game, I've actually slowly moved all of my stockpiles and my granaries way outside of the town. And the reason I've done this is because I don't need them inside town. What the market will do is collect resources from around the area, and you can employ people in there to do it, and then deliver that resource out to the surrounding area within its green circle so by doing so I'm basically creating a central zone where everyone from all these houses can go and collect their stuff really really easily there's no delay and it means that again it's like the labor thing from earlier everything's slightly more efficient anyway guys I think that will do as a sort of basic introduction to the game hopefully that tells you enough to get a little way into it at least obviously if you have any questions please stick them down in the comments below and I'll get on with answering them and I will probably be bringing some updates to this video uh, once I've got sort of some of the more in-depth strategies worked out and I can bring those to you in a slightly more solid guide for that end of things. Overall I find Banished great fun. Uh, it's one of those slightly frustrating time killers in that you'll sit down to play some Banished and the next thing you'll know it'll be five hours later and you'll wonder what on earth you've been doing but that's got to say something for the game being good surely. So thanks a lot for listening guys and I will see you next time.